Hi friends. Now in DAMS Unplugged series on YouTube, we often try to share a clinical scenario which has some Im implication in the basic sciences. So today I have selected a embryological variant for you. It is important from a resident's perspective, even for an ENT surgeon's perspective, you know, and even for a radiologist to know. And even sometimes as an undergraduate, you might get this as an MCQ as well. So look at the history of the patient here. You have a 16 year old boy with a long standing history of headache, vomiting, dizziness and ringing in the ear, which is like tinnitus. And when you in the physical examination, you saw a pulsatile reddish mass behind the tympanic membrane. So this is the history and I'll you know talk about the DD later on. But on this history, a CT scan of the temporal bone, HRCT of the temporal bone was advised. Let us look at the CT scan and let's try to find out the findings. So look at this section here and I have tried to mark the findings for you with a red arrow and a black arrow. So this is a HRCT temporal bone. With the red arrow you can see on the right side foramen spinosum. This is the foramen through which the middle meningeal artery passes. And when I look at the left side where the, I have marked a black arrow you can see there is no foramen spinosum there. So what are we able to see? There is absent foramen spinosum in this patient. Now, when we try to follow the carotid artery and the area of the foramen lacerum and the petrous temporal bone and the middle ear on, in, on HRCT sections, we are able to see, can you see my red arrow is marking a branch coming out of the, from the carotid canal, from the internal carotid artery, you can see a branch is coming out. So you can see a branch arising from the vertical petrous part of the ICA and which is present posterior and lateral to the ICA. Let us try to follow this branch further. We can see it, you know, we can see my red arrow marking that branch for you. And then we can see the soft tissue going into the middle ear. And when it goes into the middle ear, you can see it. this soft tissue will be seen along the cochlear promontory and will, will be passing through the, to, between the two crura of the stapes. Now, then when we go superior you can see the soft tissue extending here and you can see that now that soft tissue is seen to exit the middle ear into the middle cranial fossa along the greater petrosal nerve and then it is forming the middle meningeal artery now let me explain the entire scenario again to you we saw uh, absence of foramen spinosum and we are able to see a branch arising from the internal carotid artery going posterolateral to it then going into the middle ear ascending between the along the cochlear promontory between the two crura of stapes and then exiting the middle ear to go into the middle cranial fossa along with the greater petrosal nerve this is the classic course of uh, diagnosis is persistent stapedial artery now before i discuss the clinical aspect of this uh, disease i or this anatomical variant i will invite dr sandeep madan to talk about the anatomical basis of or the embryological basis of what we have seen so far in the ct scan dr sandeep thank you sir now <clears throat> let us discuss uh, the embryology you see we have this uh, the pharyngeal arch arteries we have this uh, one to six pharyngeal arch artery which connect the aortic sac to the dorsal iota and we know the what are the uh, develop i mean the derivative from this aortic arches the first arch will form the maxillary artery the second will form the hyoid and the stapedial artery what is important here is to understand about the third arch artery third arch proximal segment will make the common carotid and the distal segment is going to make the internal carotid artery right so the third arch artery is going to form the common carotid and the internal carotid and the new bud will be developing that will be making the external carotid artery right and for timing we can see the hyoid artery or the stapedial artery is initially it is coming from the internal carotid artery this is the basics of the embryology part that we are going to discuss today for the today's case right now if we proceed we see that this is the internal carotid artery and we can see from internal carotid artery the stapedial artery is actually coming passing through the stapes okay the <clears throat> the stapes part and then it is continuing as the stapedial the proximal segment of the stapedial artery is actually known as hyoid artery right and when we see this uh, stapedial artery is further dividing into two divisions upper division and the lower division the upper division is what is known as supraorbital division and the lower division which will further divide into maxillary and the mandibular branches right and <clears throat> till now this is 
coming from the internal carotid artery but as the development progresses there will be more demand on the internal carotid artery system because of the telencephalic De uh, like uh, uh, development right and then this will be new but that I discussed that is known as ventral pharyngeal artery which is actually coming to form the external carotid artery so finally as we know that maxillary artery middle meningeal artery these are all branches from the external carotid artery system but initially they are coming from the internal carotid artery right and they are actually different from the rest of the branches of external carotid artery now if we proceed with the development it will look like that these two divisions you see this uh, ventral pharyngeal artery is going to approach and this will be finally merge with the ventral pharyngeal artery or you can say the future external carotid artery right like this now we can see this is the external carotid artery this was original internal carotid artery right like this and this is the external carotid artery and this is further uh, dividing like uh, maxillary arteries there right and then we have the middle uh, meningeal arteries there so the system the arterial system is basically transferred from internal carotid to external carotid part and <clears throat> this is the final uh, the derivatives like we have infraorbital, we have middle meningeal and the infra alve alveolar arteries. Then we, we were discussing the stapedial artery upper division and the lower division. The upper division or the supraorbital part is going to make the middle meningeal part. Okay, the distal part of the middle meningeal will come from the supraorbital artery. The maxillary division will continue as the infraorbital and the mandibular will continue as the inferior alveolar artery. Right? This is the normal pattern now discussing about this embryological origin and their variation with respect to the present case as the sir has explained so now let us look at the variation part and how it really occurs and uh, how to correlate the clinical thing with the embryological discussion let us proceed and see this picture now <coughs> Uh, then initial part as I said the hyoid artery or the stapedial artery is coming from the internal carotid artery right and this is what is the forerunner of the external carotid artery this part that is the ventral pharyngeal artery this will go and further meet with we can see in this diagram that external carotid artery is actually meeting here it has joined right now initially you see the flow is coming from the internal carotid artery and actually going to the uh, stapedial artery but when they have joined in the third picture that we can see in the third picture that we can see here the flow of blood is from external carotid artery okay like this so this particular segment the stapedial artery is no longer required to take blood from the internal carotid artery so finally the dynamics will change and what is going to happen is this that inside the stapedial artery is no longer required it will actually persist as only branch of internal carotid artery the carotico-tympanic branch okay so which is like uh, angiographically it, it does it it remains below the level of resolution but rest of the important uh, branches are coming from the external carotid artery right external carotid artery but sometimes it may happen so that upper division upper division of uh, stapedial artery is still coming from the internal carotid artery and it is not coming from the uh, this part that is external carotid artery we can see the lower division is coming from the external carotid artery but the stapedial artery in this particular case is persistent and it will come from the posterior lateral part of the internal carotid artery will pass through the stapid stapes and it will actually accompany the greater petrosal nerve okay and it will appear in the middle cranial fossa now it is already in the middle cranial fossa so it does not need to pass through the foramen spinosum so in this particular case of persistent stapedial artery this artery is actually coming from internal carotid artery instead of coming from uh, the uh, you see the uh, middle meningeal artery the, the, that will be coming from the persistent stapedial artery that is coming from the internal carotid artery only instead of coming from the external carotid artery right so this is the embryological variation and no structure is actually passing through the foramen spinosum so there won't be any hole so no structure no hole like that okay so this is the embryological basis of the uh, today's clinical case All right and now i would like to request uh, sumer sir to conclude on the clinical part
Thank you, Dr. Sandeep, for an excellent description of why you have a persistent stapedial artery and why in this scenario the middle meningeal artery was arising from the internal carotid artery. And we you could see on a HRCT and we could, you know, make out uh, the course of the uh, persistent stapedial artery in the CT images. Now, let me give you some conclusions on what we have learned so far. Today, we have learned that persistent stapedial artery is a rare vascular anomaly and whenever you see a pulsatile mass behind the tympanic membrane it should be considered as a differential diagnosis other differential diagnosis that you you know you can you can think of should be ruled out by doing cross sectional imaging like in our case we did a ct scan hrct we can do mr angiogram to look at it you can even do a conventional angiography to find out this otherwise during surgery you may lead to some complications now what are the symptomatology in these patients may usually are asymptomatic but they can come with conductive hearing loss or tinnitus and in our patient we saw tinnitus as the presenting complaint and if the patient is symptomatic you may at times consider doing ligation but if you want to do ligation you have to do arteriogram and what is the goal of arteriogram in this patient you want to see if it is an end artery or if it is supplying giving the substantial supplying to the sensitive tissue and what dds are we talking about we are talking about things like glomus tympanicum or a aberrant carotid artery or a jugular bulb as a dd whenever you see a pulsatile mass behind the tympanic membrane you should also keep persistent stapedial artery also as one of the dd in addition to the classic differential diagnosis of glomus tumor uh, or aberrant carotid bulb or jugular bulb so once you have this in mind i am sure you will be on a lookout for this you know, em embryological variant. Do follow us on Dam Siri channel on YouTube or Dam Siri page on Facebook for more such interesting videos. Thank you.